to practice astrology would be good to have Atmakaraka somehow related to 11th in the Rashi or in the Navamsha. It can happen in Navamsha also. Do you also give weightage to like uh, how how well placed it is? Like if it's of course, I mean if it's exalted, it's better or own sign, it's good. But what if that Atmakaraka is in debility or it's under curse or something like this? Yeah, then it's then it's much more difficult. Basically, this Atmakaraka related to 11th house um, must not mean astrology only. It can oh, be okay. other Vedanga. The uh -huh. other Veda, I see. Uh, uh, then that depends on the yoga. For example, if there is Mars relation, okay. Like in my case, I have Mars 11th Lord with Atmakaraka Jupiter, so Mars normally shows Jyotish. So Agni, the fire, okay. normally is for astrology because astrology is very much about prediction, about predictions, and uh, predictions are uh, vision. And ah, the vision okay. is fire, okay. visuals, okay. so therefore... That's why it's the Sun and Mars. Sun, Mars, Ketu, yeah. And how would you rate like uh, Sun, so any of the three will work here if like Sun or Mars or Ketu in the 11th? I would, to be super honest, I don't know the exact, I was not taught. Th ah. This is a very nice question, but uh, I would speculate that uh, from this point you are not really saying what kind of Vedanga it is. It just shows that your soul is connected to any kind of tradition or spirituality. Okay, no? I see. Better indicator would be to see Fifth Lord in fifth this Lord, case. Okay. Fifth Lord connected to 12th house or fiery planets like uh, fifth Mars. Fifth Lord from the Lagna or, or the... From the Lagna, from okay. the Lagna. Huh? And what about like uh, married life, like when people ask you about how will be my married life. Of course the Dashas are important but uh, what else do you see like apart from uh, like the standard things like Venus and 7th house? What are some of the other things that you see which people may not be seeing in your opinion? <laughs> mm -hmm. I have seen that uh, Venus, 7th Lord and 6th or 8th may show that people don't want to marry. Ah, I see. <laughs> this is my recent or maybe they are realization. Kind of Yes, uh, even when uh, people will say, oh, what? I don't want to marry, I'm doing everything for marriage. But they have something in them which makes them very independent. Uh, they try to be somehow self-reliable. So they are depending on self very much. They are, we could say, like warriors. Uh, okay. I have a few friends with seven Lord and six house with Venus and they are looking for a relationship okay very much but their vibe is basically that they can do in life independent they are somehow their mindset is like for more independent way of thinking eh? so when the seven Lord and Venus are in second 12 six or eight this is like very basic we could say uh, psychological um, Dilemma, we could call it, and there could be uh, some problem with that. So, if the sec seventh lord is in second, still you say it's a dilemma because yes, yes. the dustana from the seventh lord. Yes, yes, yes. It's the ah. best shadowy house because the twelve, second, six, or eight are all shadow houses. Okay. They are dustana because they are in shadow from the sun. But the second is called Haribaba. Oh, could you please repeat? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so when we have uh, when we have the sun, if, if yeah. we see the sun, yeah. then anything which is in the second, twelve, six, or eight okay. is like in the shadow. Oh, right? it's in the I shadow. See. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. So therefore, dushtana means that uh, there is a darkness there and because of that the darkness because it's it's not in the uh, close proximity with the sun okay and uh, there is the the tamas guna can come very oh, easily okay, because see. the sun hates tamas guna whenever it's the sun it, it really hates tamas guna so if there is no uh, no uh, light okay then the tamas guna can come and therefore all the evils the six eight and twelve oh, okay. and the problems with it. but the second house is very interesting because the second house is called hari baba oh, okay it, it has this blessing of hari and therefore second house is excluded from the dushtana because it has oh. the function to feed you is the house when the moon is exalted so it's second house it's very positive but when the seventh lord is there or venus is there it still may show that you may be rejected by others 
when it comes to relationships. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. So, Shastra you also, when you others. see Shastras, when you see Shastras, they don't uh, speak very well of Venus in the second. I or see. Seventh Lord in the second. Okay. <laughs> Not, also, the spouse may be unavailable. If the Seventh Lord is in the second house, the spouse may be unavailable. For example, may work a lot, be in oh. other country. Also, those things which you said also, they apply to seven and in fact, second. Uh, today I saw in Instagram you said about like Rikta Tithi. Rikta. So you said like somebody is born in a Chaturdashi or like a Chaturthi. Chaturthi, Navami ah. and uh, Chaturdashi. Yeah, that's a Rikta Tithi. Rikta. Okay, so what kind of problems can come like unavailable emotionally? This is very interesting because when you talk about Titi, we have 15 Titis in the Krishna and Shukla Paksha yeah. and they are 30 Titis in the month, the lunar days. Yeah. Um, so in Western astrology, they are popularized very much as a new moon or a oh, full yeah, moon, right? It's yeah, rituals. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It's, it's also had a very big tradition in Poland in the, before Christianity. Uh, there was a very big tradition of Slavs a pagan, pagan oh, tradition okay. and the full moon and new moon it was really very much celebrated like in India I they see. had special rituals like going to water and all that so that was okay. in Russia Ukraine Poland in the Slavs countries it was very much accentuated therefore we are uh, gravitating towards those ideas okay and but definitely what we can say is that uh, titis are then categorized to tatvas okay so they are divided into those uh, Nanda, Badra, Rikta, Purna, and what? And Jaya. And Jaya. Ah, okay. uh, so one of them is Rikta Titi, and the Rikta is Nanda is one, six, eleven, and Jaya is third, eight, and thirteen. Rikta is fourth, nine, and fourteen. And the Rikta okay. is a water, ah. and Titi is also general water. Okay. So it's like a relationship between water and water. Ah, okay. Therefore, these people, like me, I also am Navami, and Sri Ram also had, was Navami, uh, they may have problems with relating to other people. Okay. Because their emotions doesn't uh, go... They, they don't have a relationship with any other element. It's like, Titi is generally water. Okay. And you are water category in the water. I so see. you don't, you only relate to yourself. Okay, I see. So therefore these people, when they are young, they are, they behave like they are in the, their own world. Okay. Some think, some may think, oh, this person may be autistic, even, sometimes. Okay. But it doesn't mean, that this must not be this. It is just that the person is has a problem to relate to others okay. because he's in the water. It, yeah, it's no yeah, other yeah. element. Oh, okay, I see. No? So therefore, this uh, this but this is psychological. Okay. This is psychological. To be it also circumstantial. To be it really the case, you have to check the Lord. You yeah, have to yeah, check yeah. Navamsha, Upapada. Okay. These three are very important. And regarding Upapada, also like what, what? central thing for marriage. Okay. Central, most important. Okay, so Upapada is the Aruda of the 12th house. Aruda of the 12th house, yes. If you're, for example, many people are asking, will my marriage survive? I see, okay. Hmm? Huh? You know, very popular yeah, question. Will yeah, my marriage or, survive? No, when will be a second marriage? <laughs> yeah, that is, if it not survive, <laughs> yeah. this is the second one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so there is only one point which can answer this question in your chart, and this is second lord from the Upapana. I see. If the second lord from the Upapana is strong in Rashi or in the Navamsha, your marriage will survive. I see. Okay. So there is no other way to check it. You cannot check it by eight lord, you cannot check it by eight lord in Navamsha. Only second from Upapada will tell you that if it will survive or break. Because the Upapada is the contract which is made with the another person. So the question is really, will that contract survive? Okay. Then marriage is like a contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Contract of exclusiveness. You are only for me. <laughs> <laughs> you are only for me. This is the contract. Yes, yes. So if the second lord from Upapada is... Weak. It will not survive. Ah, okay. I see. So th therefore you can also count which Upapada will survive. 
okay. by seeing. Okay, okay. First of all, first of all, is the Upapada strong? Secondly, is the second from Upapada strong? If they both are strong, then it means that uh, your marriage will survive. And I, I've also heard that you take the second Upapada as the second marriage. Is it like eight from the first Upapada? Exactly. You need to. Also, marriage, the word marriage may also be um, difficult. I was taught the, the nice uh, wording for this would be attempt to getting married. Oh, okay. This is Upapan. I see. First attempt to getting married, second attempt to getting married. It must not be marriage, it may be a very serious relationship. Normally we say uh, more than one year. If it's oh, more okay. than one year, it's Upapada. Okay. If it's only like three months, flings or affair, two months, it's not Upapada. Okay. So it can not mean like any relationship also, not necessarily marriage. Exactly. But it must be serious. You wanted really to be with that person. Normally it's more than one year. At least we say also that you have to think about that person for more than one year. Ah, okay. Interesting. Interesting I factor. See. So if the second lot from the Upapada is not well placed, then you will not be able to take it to marriage. That, that is no, 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 no. If Upapada Lord is yeah. weak, you will not marry it. If Upapada Lord is strong, yeah. you can be married. But if second from Upapada is weak, you may divorce afterwards. Oh, this is the nice uh, way. Yeah, yeah. I see. So okay. Upapada Lord. If you will marry that person. Oh, okay. Second from Upapana, so if you will sasnas, exactly. Okay. So this is very handy tool uh, when it comes to answer that question. Because it's very hard if you don't have Upapana, it's hard to say if it will survive. You can do Prashna then. Okay. Prashna will be so in the, the prashna, second. Prashna then how do you identify that? Uh, in the Prashna basically like suppose you see in the Rashi chart but you get some hints that maybe it will not survive. So then what do you see like in the eighth house will be very much pronounced. Lagna will be connected to eighth house or Saturn. Okay. Also in the yearly chart. Sometimes okay. sixth house. Okay. So you can open the yearly chart, Varshapa, Titi Pravesh, ah, whatever okay. you are using, Prashna and the uh, connection of 6 or 8 Saturn to the Lagna, it shows the divorce. Because the Saturn has the separate effect, like uh, Saturn is Vayu. Yeah, it's yeah. also different between Western astrology and Western, it's uh, Earth element. Oh, I see. So in Vedic it's air and yeah. this can disintegrate uh, Earth. No? Okay. Like there is a lot of air, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. It's, it's, it can really push things, it can destroy things, yeah, like yeah, the rock. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Water also can destroy, fire yeah. also. So the Saturn is displacing things. It shows that that breaking things. So we have okay. Jupiter, which is connecting Akasha Tatva, Ether. Oh, okay. Jupiter connects everyone. Everything, everyone uh -huh. is one. And oh, Saturn okay. and Rahu also. Rahu is very much separating things. Separating. Therefore, Rahu creates borders. Uh, oh, in India, I'm yeah. I'm from south. I'm from north. Uh, we are the Tamil Nadus. We are the best. We are yeah, this. Yeah, no? yeah, so yeah, all okay. these. Um, Borders. Uh, this is Rahu and Saturn. So if Saturn six, eight in Prashna uh, are connected to Lagna or also seventh house, now it depends who is breaking. Uh, oh, okay. If in Navamsha, if eight Lord is connected to seven, then spouse is breaking. If it's connected to Lagna, then you are breaking. This you can oh, also see. So the eighth Lord will tell you to who yes. is connected. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, and the Navam in general is also very important, right, for marriage. Yes, and the difference would be that the Navam is what is happening in your marriage which may not have big impact on you. Okay. Rasi chart shows all the things which will impact you very much. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, the relationship will impact you very much. It can change you totally. It can okay. take you out of drugs. It can take you into drugs. <laughs> it can uh -huh. take you to another country. It can make you uh, indebted. You okay. can take a loan and the lady will leave you. You will uh, okay. be with a big loan. It can Many things can happen. I see. So that will be in Rashi. Okay, the physical manifestation. Yes, what is on you? What is the oh, okay. impact on environment? Because the Varga shows environment. So what is the environment impact on you? Oh, okay. But the, but the, um, the Navamsha, it just shows what's happening in the marriage. No matter if it will impact you 
for a long time or not. Okay, I see. So the Rasi chart, it's the impact of everything, of career life, the Shamsa, of Shodamsa, the vehicles, the four apartments, the Vim Shamsa uh, spirituality, the 24 education, how all the Vargas are changing yeah, you, impacting okay. you and and all that. No? So okay. that is the nice way I would... How you would define the difference between the Rasi and Navancha in this context? Yeah, I feel the Rasi chart is very important because it tells you what's happening in the external world at the end of the day. Yeah. So for example, if the sixth house is activated, considering there are the other combinations are like just standard, you know, some good combination, some bad. And if the sixth house is active, then there could be a separation. Exactly. From uh, your spouse. But if the Navamsha is not indicating separation, then it can mean that maybe, you know, there, it's like a temporary uh, thing which you are feeling, but yes. it, it's not the cause of a big separation. Exactly, yes. But if the Navamsha also indicates, the Navamsha will more indicate do you really want to stay in the marriage or do you don't want? Mm. <laughs> Interesting, okay. And I've also seen if the 8th Lord is linked with the Navamsha 7th Lord or something, then uh, then maybe the person stays or but the person doesn't want to. But if the Rashi chart doesn't show the 6th house, the person will end up staying but will not want to stay. Ah, got but, it. But got if it. the Rashi chart shows the 6th house, then bang on, it breaks. Yes. So why did the 8th Lord of Navamsha mm -hmm. is linked with the 7th house? Sometimes even the Lagna. And sometimes the other other way around, you know, your, uh, your eighth lord is not linked in the Navamsha, but in your Rashi, the sixth house is indicated. Okay, then. Then it's like saying you wanted to stay, you want to stay with somebody, but the, due to some reason you can't stay, you know, it's like. Got it. Okay. There was one case, uh, one uh, client of mine, uh, he, he had this combination. His sixth house was activated and his dasha had just started. When he had consulted me, he said, Sir, uh, we are about to get married now, what will happen? I said, uh, I was wondering, how in the universe did the marriage finalize? <laughs> Is the chart wrong? Yeah, then <laughs> I did some birth <laughs> time rectification and I did some prashna and some other tools I used. And so it was perfectly alright. And then I saw in the Navamsha, well, uh, his seventh lord was in fifth, you know, in great dignity and also he really wants this. And then within some days, this person called me and said, you know, my grandfather expired. Oh. So now one year you cannot marry. Ah, so circumstantial, something external. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for one and a half years, that Antardasha was running. Yes. Then the next Antardasha was like neutral. It's, it did not say yes, neither did it say no. Uh -huh. So if it's neutral and you, the Navamsa is positive, so then he got married in the next Antardasha. Got it. Got it. So okay. this is a situation where you want to marry, but you can't. Yes. And some places people, if both are bad, you don't want don't and worry. the marriage breaks. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't want, but the Rashi chart shows, you know, seventh lord in a great dignity or something, then it shows you will be like, okay, I may not like this person, but my dharma is I should stay married. Aha. Uh -huh. And why it is happening? Uh, because of uh, what? What characteristic of Rashi? Why uh, it is like that? How, how you would explain? Because I, because I think uh, the, the, the zodiac sign, a particular Rashi tells you, you know, your level of awareness and the sense of duty that you have. Uh -huh. So I have seen if seventh lord is in a good dignity, you know, friend sign or you know, exalted or you know, own sign, multicon, then that sense of uh, maintaining the marriage is exactly. very strong. I agree, we are saying the same, yes. Yeah, but, but if the Navam shows otherwise, it might be like, okay, it's my duty, like Lord Ram, okay, whatever, or Sita Devi, it's my marriage, I'll maintain, whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But you may not like to stay with that person. Right? Yes. Or sometimes it could be the opposite, that mm -hmm. you like and you can't end up marrying the person. Sometimes it is also seen that person dies or something happens, you know. Or the, the spouse's father doesn't agree, something like this. Yes. Yes, so therefore you just cannot see the Lagna chart, the Rasi chart and you can't just see the Navamsha. You always have to see both together. Yes, true. Because when people really ask you, I have a problem in my marriage. So then I ask, is it like a one-on-one -on -one problem that you have with each other or is it something 
which is beyond your control. Got it. Right? Okay. Okay. So if it is beyond your control, like some other person is not agreeing, or somebody died, mm -hmm. like grandfather died one year, you can't marry. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to see when, because the time can always change. Dashas keep changing. Right? Yes. One year, two year, three year. Venus, 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 uh, Venus, Venus is maximum like three, three and a half years. Yeah. That's also not till eternity. Exactly. So when that changes, because the dasha comes from the rasi chart, right? Yes. So that will change. So then the externals can also change. Exactly. But if there is a problem within the relationship, that nobody can. <laughs> yeah, the dasha is. Yeah. The dashas will not matter. And then if the dasha is also bad. You just need an excuse and you just, uh, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, yeah, now you have a job in a different city, so, I have a job in a different yeah. city, it was anyways not working, let's <laughs> yeah, call yeah. it off, it's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess, uh, very fruitful discussion with you. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Babaji, it's very yeah, nice. Great to meet you in Berlin, yeah. uh, first time. Uh, yes, yeah. so if you like this video, click the thumbs up and... Uh, subscribe. Subscribe, yeah. Yeah, to for both, both channels. <laughs> <laughs> and you can let us know in the comments if you want uh, similar videos. Of course, uh, I'll be going back uh, to Ingolstadt, but we can always uh, do Zoom recordings, right? Why not? Exactly, exactly. Hope to meet you again. Yeah. Online. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.